Police were called at about 10 o'clock this morning to check on an abandoned car, which is right in the spot where that silver car is right now. And when police came, they saw a deceased man in that vehicle. Now, immediately after that, detective swarmed the scene. They roped off this whole area, and they even put a tarp and canopy over that car so that we couldn't really see what was going on with that investigation. It's early on Monday morning here in Trenton, Missouri, when two students are walking to school. As they're walking, they cross the train tracks and enter this set of woods right here where they stumble across a dead body. I'm here at the Oak Ridge Apartments where the police were just here at this building behind me for about three hours trying to coax a suspect out of the apartment during a standoff. Now that suspect is in police custody right now. He came out about 30 minutes ago. A 33 year old male was sent to the hospital with critical injuries early Sunday morning after being shot in the chest. Captain Jeff Wilson with the St. Joseph Police Department said a disturbance between the victim and another man resulted in the shooting at 817 Vine Street, just north of Olive. Tuesday night around 945, the City Star in Maryville was robbed by a suspect wearing blue jeans, a black ski mask, and a black Duck Dynasty sweatshirt. This is video of the subject approaching the store and audio of that incident with the clerk on duty. Take a listen. April was telling me that this takes about five minutes to make. We almost done with this right here. Pretty close to being done with it. I just have to put a hook on it, but I don't want to burn you. <laughs> okay, yeah, she doesn't want to burn me and I don't want to get burned either. So I'm going to hop off and watch from a distance. I'll have a full recap of today's festivities here at Trail West later on this evening on News Press Now. And when you drive by, you can see all of the trash. Even just in my line of sight right now, I can see a McChicken wrapper, a bevy of plastic bags, two full tires and a full trash bag. And that's just all with, that my eye can see. And now I spoke to St. Joseph residents today and they said it's not just concentrated to here that there's a trash problem everywhere. And that could be because there's no municipal trash service within the city. The incident on South 11th Street ended in a standoff and an arrest of the suspect. But sometimes when citizens go back for their car, the outcome can be drastically different. Dr. Ashim Mitra allegedly hinted and threatened nearly a dozen UMKC international students with having their visas revoked if they didn't perform personal duties for him, such as serve at his social events, care for his dog, mow his lawn, and even care for his plants. What a nail biter for Mid Buchanan today. What a fun game. You know, hindsight's 2020, but I like the call to go for two there. We're gonna go out to Chicago, Illinois, where you've been watching us this morning. We were covering an incident that happened there where two police officers were actually hit by a Metra train. Both of those officers were pronounced dead at the scene. They were both in their 30s and had been serving with the police force for under five years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, there it is, folks. This is Sparky. He's definitely a cutie. Very docile. Been cool the entire five minutes I've known him here. <laughs> That's definitely always a good thing to do. You know, arrive a little bit early. And especially with that weather, if you're taking to the road, give yourself some time this holiday season. I went over to the Republican headquarters in town where Republican Senate candidate Josh Hawley spoke to about 50 local supporters. I tell you what I think. I think it's we the people who control this country. Yes, and on November the 6th, we're going to take it back. Yeah. We're going to take it back. The small Republican headquarters on Frederick was packed with supporters on Tuesday afternoon as they eagerly awaited to hear what U.S. Senate candidate Josh Hawley had to say about issues leading up to next week's election. There's so much enthusiasm. People know that this Senate race is going to determine control of the whole U.S. Senate. I mean, it's all going to come down to the state of Missouri. Our votes have never mattered more. This was his first stop of the day before he headed to Riverside to continue his tour. He spoke on things like Justice Brett Kavanaugh and what he says is Senator McCaskill's weak stance on immigration. You know, Senator McCaskill has said that the border wall is embarrassing. It's her word. She says it's embarrassing. She has voted against funding for the wall on multiple occasions. The attorney general also spoke about a big issue around the state, pre-existing condition. There are multiple ways to, to cover people with pre-existing conditions, which would be my first focus. Uh, I think we need to do that apart from Obamacare. I think we need to mandate that insurance companies do it. There are lots of ways to do it. One form is a uh, federal reinsurance. Howley also spoke on difficulties farmers in the state have faced this year regarding the tariffs. Missouri farmers did not start this trade war. The United States didn't start it. China started it and other trade cheaters, and they started it years ago. We need to win the trade war. The new deal with Mexico and Canada is a great step forward, uh, but we need to keep the pressure up. And in the meantime, farmers do need to be supported. I supported the aid package that President Trump announced. Senator McCaskill said that that package was just picking winners and losers. Halley discussed many of the president's talking points before he met with supporters. Then he hit the campaign trail again for his next stop in Riverside, Missouri.
Yeah, State Attorney General Holly will appear Thursday with President Donald Trump in Colombia as the president comes to rally for him. I got a phone call that someone had crashed into the bar. I'm here outside of the Palms Bar and Grill in Maryville, where on Sunday morning at about 1 a.m., 19-year-old Morgan McCoy lost her life at that door that is now boarded up. Eric Schreiber is the owner of Palms Bar and Grill, and he said it was hard comprehending the scene inside of the bar on that Sunday morning. Surreal walking into that bar afterwards. I went around the back to the back door when I was given the okay, and there was just chairs knocked over. There's empty glasses all over, um, the rubble from the debris, there's leftovers from the medical equipment that was used. I mean, it looked, it, it was eerie going in there. Students at Northwest Missouri State University say it's hard to wrap their head around the fact that she's gone. I know one person I met her and uh, was talking to her that night, and he said it was just, it was terrible. They said it was really weird to have him, like you're talking to her one moment and then she's gone. Everybody is just surprised by the fact that it happened and whatnot, and it just shows that one person's Stupid mistake, or um, for lack of better terms, stupid mistake is can affect the whole community in such a negative way. The driver of that car is 21 year old Alex Catterson. Catterson had a blood alcohol level more than double the legal limit of 0 0.08. He was charged on Monday with involuntary manslaughter. There's a whole community that's shaken up. There's people that are hurt. There's a girl that's dead. It's a uh, it affects a lot more than that one person. Following the accident, Schreiber started a GoFundMe page for the family to help cover burial and medical costs. I couldn't just like let it happen and fix the building and go on. Like it just doesn't work like that. So I started this so because I can only imagine what it's like in that phone call. We managed to raise uh, over eleven thousand and since yesterday afternoon when we started it. It just shows how in Maryville in the small community how everybody bands together and helps out when we need to. I think it'll draw this place together even tighter. Northwest Missouri State University is planning on holding a memorial for McCoy in the near future. If you've ever seen the Blue Angels before, you may wonder what it's like to be up there twisting and turning that high in the sky. It's a whole different level, right? It's a whole different level. So Jim Peets and I decided to try the twists and turns ourselves by actually sitting in the plane. I was a little nervous, but Jim has plenty of experience. Been flying for 43 years, uh, somewhere north of 15,000 hours. So I felt safe, and we took more safety precautions by strapping me in with a parachute just in case anything happened. And now that we have the parachute on, it's time to actually get in the plane and take to the skies. Let's go. You're going to love this, man. Hey, Joe Ground, up in here at Sea Chicago, like to coach the Express Flight Champion. Jim and I went about 10 minutes out west. The flight was nice and smooth. Then the flip started without any warning. All right, go ahead and keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> what about him? Why do you I like him? <laughs> Why do you like him? Really? No. Yeah, Come no. on, tell me. Oh. Tell me about you like him. Did I mention I didn't get much warning? I can't imagine what it feels like to be up here right now and do that. <laughs> Jim says that the flips that we were doing were nothing compared to the ones that the Blue Angels do. You go out with the uh, you go out with the Blues and you think, holy crap, they do yeah. this only on steroids. The yeah. speed and the precision. I mean, they're inches, Zach, inches from each other, and stacked and abreast, and changing formations it, during coming around on a loop. I mean, it's it's insane. We were traveling at four Gs of speed. The Blues traveled double that speed in their shows. Jim and I then headed back to the airport shortly after, and he said that once you get a taste of that sky, you can just never get enough. But it still hasn't lost its glitter, right? It's still, it's still fun. I still look forward to it every time. That's when Jim and I's journey came to an end, and I got back to sweet, sweet land. The Blue Angels are coming here to Rosecrans on August 25th and 26th. For News Press Now, I'm Zach Barrett. Five dead or dying dogs have been found within the area in just the past week. Thursday evening uh, dog here in your community that's been nicknamed uh, or named uh, Laggy for short was found not too far from here uh, with two shots to the back of the head by mushroom hunters. They got Lagatha to the hospital where she is recovering, but she wasn't the only dog shot on Thursday. Stacy Franklin also found a dog in need of help earlier Thursday morning. I rolled my window down because I always speak to them and just socialize with him and he didn't move and so I got out of the car walked over and he was covered in blood. Stacy rushed the dog to the hospital where veterinarians made another discovery. They did find another bullet in him where he had been shot once before. Can't lie I was angry 
you know, like who would do this? Immediately, Stacy reached out through Facebook and said that she found a dog on the same day, shot Moose, and uh, wanted to know if we could help or if she could help us find the perpetrators. So Shane Rudman drove over an hour and a half from the Kansas City area with his own legal team and private investigators to do just that, help Stacy find the assailant. Thousands of leads began pouring in after Shane and his group began asking for leads on social media. So I met with the sheriff's office to let them know what we were going to do, and we were there to support the sheriff in any way we could. They made a personal guarantee to me that they were following up on each and every lead. I talked to them at 8 o'clock last night. They had already reached out to um, informants. As for Moose, he went to the vet a few more times since leaving intensive care, but his future is looking up. Um, well, I'm in love, but I'm going to foster him here, and I'm hoping that we live happily ever after. Knock on wood, he's been home two days without a vet trip. This sound? That's the sound of information being given to people all around northwest Missouri and even some surrounding states when the news press is printed every single day. We have about 15,000 subscribers. The number of subscribers is down from when the newsroom used to look like this to more like this. While newspapers are looked at as a slowing medium across the country, that's not necessarily the case in this area, says the head of circulation, David Brown. The, the printed product is really the, uh, for the most part, is the, the product of choice. The next leg of your paper's journey happens right here at the printing press. Now, you may have only seen something like this in movies, but every single night, every word that's typed in in the newsroom gets physically made into hard copy right here in the wee hours of the morning. This particular run will take us right around an hour, just, just a little bit shy of an hour. That's plant manager Kevin Smith. He says the plant has picked up printing other publications like smaller newspapers and magazines to stay afloat. But that uncertainty led to some lean times for workers at the plant in the past. We lost some work, went down to one shift, picked up some work, went back to two shifts. And that's where we are now. But night in and night out, plant employees are never at a loss for work. See, he's over there adjusting color as we speak. That's what he's doing with the paper that he has. He saw something in that paper he wasn't comfortable with. He thought he could improve upon it. They lay the plates for the pictures that you see in the paper. <laughs> inserted the ads. So this is the life section for Sunday's paper. And after a few hours of work, the papers are done as they make their way to the readers. We have a, a, about 190 uh, plus routes. If we go to... Uh, Hiawatha, Kansas, we go up to Falls City, Nebraska, and we go to Chillicothe, and we go to Platte City uh, South. So it's kind of a big loop that we make. Tim Bartram is in charge of the carriers who are instructed to pick up the papers at five different drop locations around town. This is one of them at Our Lady of Guadalupe. He said that the carriers have no time to mess around. Typically, it's from 3 in the morning until 6 in the morning. They have a deadline of 6 and 6.30 that they need to be done by. Uh, we have approximately 130 carriers. The carriers come one by one, pick up a bundle, put the papers in plastic bags, and get them to your doorstep before the sun has even thought about coming up. David Brown says although newspapers are going away around the country, the content that's inside of them is not. The print has declined, but we have more readership overall because of all the different platforms that are available to us. Like the newly launched e-edition. It's good to see that we have a number of our customers, print customers, who are starting to get more involved in the digital because that's really the direction that newspapers are going in the future. The e-edition updates throughout the day and is free if you already have a newspaper subscription. But for some, there's nothing like opening up a daily miracle that's right there on your doorstep.